Hi everyone, I'm Laura Laxton with Wake Forest Baptist Health and today talking with me about breast cancer for Breast Cancer Awareness Month is Dr. Howard McNatt who is a surgical oncologist and the director of the Breast Care Center here at Wake Forest Baptist Health. So first, thank you for making time to come out and talk with us today. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So let's, let's cover some basic territory. Um, first off, what are some of the signs or symptoms breast cancer? Yeah, so for breast cancer, a lot of women won't have any signs or symptoms. They won't experience anything. Most people um, will get diagnosed because they'll have an abnormal mammogram. Mm -hmm. So their mammogram will, might show calcifications or a mass. Now, some people may have a, a, a sign mm -hmm. um, or, or, or a symptom. And so the most common signs that people might have if they don't have a normal mammogram uh, on screening mammography is they may feel a breast mass. Mm -hmm. um, that's very common. Um, they may have or notice some skin dimpling. And it's usually when you raise your arm, you might see that the skin might dimple in on the breast. Or even if it's down, it'll st you'll still see it. But usually it's when you move your arm and you look at your breast. Um, some people may uh, present with some nipple discharge. When nipple discharge is usually that's not a common presentation for breast cancer. It's a common presentation for a thing called an introductal papilloma, which is usually benign. Um, you know what? I'm sorry. Even if it's benign, if yeah. I have some kind of breast discharge, I am freaking out. Yes. And oh, calling I you know. guys immediately. You definitely <laughs> should go and get that checked out. You should definitely go and get it checked out. Um, and then the other one may be some skin changes. Um, um, such uh, the, as the worst type of uh, breast cancer can is called inflammatory breast cancer, and that presents with redness of the breast. It looks like an infection, um, and um, some swelling of the breast. Okay. Uh, that one's a little trickier to diagnose, but um, we can diagnose it for us uh, for the uh, the person. But most people, if they have redness of the breast, it's most likely going to be an infection but you should go to your doctor to get it evaluated. Okay, yeah, I was just about to say, so for nursing moms, mastitis mm -hmm. is pretty common. Right. So would it, does it present similarly like that or differently? It, or? it presents as redness of the breast. Your okay. breast will look red, but you will not have a fever or you're not, uh, it won't, will not feel hot. Okay, um, so not infection signs. Right, okay. if you, don't have the, you do not have those signs of infection, it's just red and swollen. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Uh -huh. I guess I would probably think, oh, I've been bitten by a bug, or right. oh, I wore that itchy bra, or something right. like that, if I saw right. redness. But right. okay, no one to look for. So, what about in men? Do mm -hmm. they have similar signs? Well, men, because they don't get screening mammography, they will never. They don't have that issue. But usually, if a man presents with breast cancer, it's because they feel a, a lump, mm -hmm. and they almost all the time it's because they feel a lump in the, in their breast or they may feel some ab enlarged abnormal lymph nodes underneath their underarm. Okay. Well, if you want to have a test subject for a male ma uh, mammogram, I volunteer my husband. Okay. <laughs> hey, honey. Uh, <laughs> right now he is not happy with me. <laughs> so if it's not typical to find signs or symptoms unless it's very advanced mm -hmm. or to a certain point. You said that usually it's caught on a mammogram. Mm -hmm. Is that the only kind of test that they do? Yeah, so, so screening mammography is a number one test to detect breast cancer, it mm -hmm. really is. The, um, screening ultrasound is not as um, good at detecting all types of breast cancer, so we don't really do that much screening ultrasound. So you really need to get your annual mammogram. Okay, so when, what is the difference really, like between a mammogram and an ultrasound other right. than mammogram and ultrasound. Yeah. But I mean, when, when would you use which one? So you always get anyone over the age of 40, the American College of Surgeons, the American College of Radiology recommends annual mammography, so once a year. So, you know, a mammogram compresses you and you get uh, images. We, we really do recommend people get the 3D mammogram or the mm -hmm. tomosynthesis. That's, that's far better than a 2D or digital mammogram. It's really the state of care now and people really should not really begin 2D mammograms anymore. Um, so that's for screening. Mm -hmm. So um, you may get an ultrasound for several reasons. One, if you feel a mass, okay. then the, we will also order an ultrasound with the mammogram. Um, 
or if the radiologist, when they look at your film, if they see something that looks suspicious for a mass, okay. then they will recommend that to get an ultrasound to further evaluate that area. Okay, so the ultrasound kind of helps them determine, is it, is it not, is it something right. else? So it turns, or ultrasound, the main thing to determine if it's cystic, a mm -hmm. fluid-filled little cyst, or if it's a solid mass. Okay. Because if it's, it's a cyst, it's nothing. You don't have to worry about cysts, really. Okay. But a solid mass, then you got to figure out what that is. Okay. Hmm. Did not know. Mm -hmm. Never really stopped to think about that. <laughs> um, so what are, we always hear about the different stages of breast cancer, but what do they mean? When somebody says, oh, I have stage two breast cancer, or I have stage, I've even heard zero breast mm -hmm. cancer, how can you have a stage zero? Right. <laughs> what, does the, what do these mean? <laughs> yeah, so essentially there's like five stages, including stage zero. So stage zero is for a ductal carcinoma in situ. That's a very, very early uh, breast cancer, has excellent c prognosis. We still consider it, uh, as of today, to be a breast cancer, and it, it's treated as such, but that is stage zero. Uh, stage one is when the cancer becomes invasive, and invasive just means invasive to the duct. So you have ducts that- They're um, all throughout. All throughout your breast, mm -hmm. and all ducts lead to the nipple. Mm -hmm. um, so if the duct, if I cut a duct in half and this is a duct, and if there's cancer poking out the side, yeah, like this, so it's up to the duct. Then like that's a clogged a, pipe. Right, but it, it's coming out of it even. Mm -hmm. Then that's invasive breast cancer. So a state for invasive d just determines by the size of it, how big it is. Um, um, and that's usually stage one. Usually stage two can be invasive. It's invasive, but may have lymph node involvement okay. on if you're underarm. Stage three is this, is this bigger uh, size, mm -hmm. usually more than um, usually more than five centimeters, also with or without lymph node involvement. Mm -hmm. And stage four is when it has spread or metastasized to another part of the body. Okay, and it can be to any part of the body. Yeah, I mean, well, breast cancer typically can go to the bones, it mm. can travel to the liver, it can go to the lungs, um, and it or the brain, unfortunately. Mm. Okay. So are there different types of cancer that tend to correlate with the different stages? You mentioned a very long named one for stage zero. That's a carcinoma, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, right. that one, right. that very long name. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so I mean, are there other different types of breast cancer that, that tend to like, oh, when we catch this, it's going to be a stage one or it's going to be right. a stage two, right. regardless of size. Well, the only thing that's new I about that, it's not really, it's, it's a type related to the receptor. So there's three markers or receptors for breast cancer. Okay. One is estrogen, the second is progesterone, and the third one is this one called HER2 new. So if your cancer is what you may see, uh, uh, in, in publications or hear about ca called triple negative. It's estrogen, okay. progesterone, and HER2 negative. That type of breast cancer is more aggressive than if a cancer is estrogen sensitive or positive okay. or HER2 positive. So if you have a triple negative breast cancer, it can be small, but because it's kind of an aggressive type of breast cancer, it can, um, the stage may up it. You may it have can a progress high rapidly. Right. Yeah. You can have easily a small cancer that, if it's estrogen positive, be a stage one, but because it's triple negative, it's a stage two. Okay. So there, there's some nuances with that one. Um, it, um, there's a yeah. lot of nuances yeah. to it, really. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Yeah. You know, I, growing up and then as I became of age to have mammograms, you know, you just think breast cancer, single, like, okay, mm -hmm. it's a lump, it's in your breast, and that's what breast cancer is. But mm -hmm. I have found out through doing these and, and learning more about what the care we have here, mm -hmm. there's so much more to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of amazing and yeah. fascinating and yeah. disturbing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So glad you guys are here. <laughs> Very glad you guys are here. Um, so we've talked about signs, we've talked about tests, we've talked about some of the stages. Now let's talk about, so what do you do? Right. What, what, what kinds of treatment are out there and how do you decide which one to use? Right. So a lot of it is a discussion with the, um, the, the, the person. Um, so if a cancer is found early through, especially through mammography, mm -hmm. or even if you, you palpate an area, 
let's say let's say it's it's small it's small as less than two centimeters or even if it's between two to five centimeters that, that's relatively you can treat it easily the first thing typically you a person will undergo is surgery so the surgical choice is a lumpectomy mm -hmm. or a mastectomy so lumpectomy is just taking the area out preserving the breast or a mastectomy removing the breast so if you have a small cancer the person can have a choice which way they want to go which one they want to do um, if you have a lumpectomy, you have to have radiation treatments. Those two go hand in hand. Okay. So you can't forego the radiation. The radiation will typically occur, let's say, five to six weeks after the surgery, but the radiation in and of itself is typically um, uh, for four weeks, Monday through Friday. So every day you have to come for a treatment. So that requires you to, you know, be able to come to a radiation center. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people may live far away, like you know, West Virginia, maybe they can't come, mm -hmm. you know, so that you have to take that into consideration in determining what um, uh, treatment you can. So let's say if you can't come to a radiation center or you don't want to have radiation for whatever reason, um, then you really have to have a mastectomy. So okay. mastectomy is removal of the breast. Um, here, if someone has a mastectomy, we can offer them breast reconstructive surgery by plastic surgeons and that is covered by insurance because it's a national law that was passed in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> One good law. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'll take that as a win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, um, sorry, brain blank. I, I had a question and I was trying to listen and think my question. Lumpectomy and radiation, mm -hmm. why do those two have to go together? Right, so let's say if I have a, 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 a cancer up here in my breast, um, I don't, you don't know theoretically if there's a stray cancer cell someplace else in your breast oh. that no imaging, I don't care, what, MRI, whatever, will not detect. Yeah. So in order to uh, prevent it from recurring in that breast, you really need the radiation to sort of sterilize the rest of the breast so okay. that um, no cancer will come up later on. Okay. Okay. So it's sort of, sort of a search and destroy for any little stray. Uh -huh. Right. Got it. Right. Okay. But with a mastectomy, since you've removed all, all the, the tissue, it yeah, doesn't matter. You don't have to work. Yeah. Okay. So there's mastectomy, there's lumpectomy. Um, if you have the mastectomy, which I, can be a single or a bilateral. Correct? Right. I really want people to try to do single. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, bilateral is really indicated. The main indication is if you have a genetic mutation. So people have a strong family history. Mm -hmm. We really try to test them. Um, before surgery, we can run a real quick genetic test that has like a seven day, seven or so day turnover mm -hmm. to see if they carry the, the BRCA, the BRCA gene, yeah. or any mm -hmm. other genes, like there's, a, there's 32, there's a ton. There's 32 yeah. genes, there are nine actionable genes, genes that we act on, uh, to see if they carry one of these genes, and if they do, then they're high risk of developing cancer in both breasts at some point in their life. So it's, if someone, especially has a BRCA mutation, it's hard when, you know, you might have a cancer in the right breast, but, you know, you don't want to be like five years later and then have a cancer in the left breast. So mm -hmm. most people, I do try to push them a little bit more towards bilateral mastectomies. They don't have to do it. Some people aren't mentally ready for that, mm -hmm. but some people are. So we, we have a discussion about that. Yeah, so it's almost like a... a Kind of a preventative thing, right, or exactly. to, to keep from having yeah. to worry: Is it going to be this year? Is right. it going to be this year? Right, is it? exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can see where that would be. Yeah, it's a no really working. difficult right. choice. Yeah, to have to make, mm -hmm. live with the uncertainty, or or lose both your breasts. Right. Right. Wow. So, what other? What other? Are there other? What What other treatments do we do? Right. So then, after uh, uh, the surgery, now this depends on. Then it comes into play with the receptors. So we okay. talked about, so if the tumor is estrogen positive, is sensitive to estrogen, um, usually that's an easier to treat type of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe if there's no cancer in the lymph nodes, then we might just recommend the person take tamoxifen or an aromatase inhibitor. That's a, an anti-estrogen pill you take for five years. So you might just have, just have to have surgery. If, and radiation, if you have a lumpectomy or, or a surgery, and, and and meaning a mastectomy and mm -hmm. then take the pill. So a lot of people that nowadays, that's what they do. They just have to take this pill for five years, so, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty good. Now, if the cancer, it, cancer is HER2 positive, that is a more kind of rapidly growing cancer. So those people will need to 
have um, a short course of chemotherapy and take Herceptin, this okay. medicine that attacks at HER2. And if they're triple negative, they will need chemotherapy. Um, the only other way someone might need chemotherapy also is if um, there's cancer in the lymph nodes. So typically, typically, and this is evolving too, things about breast cancer research, they change so rapidly. So, so s some people with cancer in the lymph nodes, uh, if we think their occurrence is very high, um, we will tell them to also do chemotherapy. Okay. So maybe most people may not need chemotherapy, which would be good. It, it just, it depends on the type of breast cancer is related to these receptors. And if it's a higher stage, like it's stage three mm -hmm. or so. Again, so many factors that right. have to go into it's all a lot of, of this. Factors, yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned having that the women, if they're facing surgery, have, mm -hmm. I guess, the option, mm -hmm. but I would imagine most of them do, to bring in a plastic and reconstructive surgeon to mm -hmm. talk about breast reconstruction. Um, so plastic surgery, oncology, those are different disciplines. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about the multidisciplinary approach right. that we use here? Right, so here, um, um, before we see the patient, we kind of all meet together, the mammographer, the, the pathologist, the radiation oncologist, the medical oncologist, the surgeons, um, myself, and we review the person's um, imaging and their pathology results. So then we, we go and present it to the patient, what are some recommendations we have. Um, that day, um, if the person uh, has some additional questions or, or needs um, additional information, they can meet with, like, let's say the radiation oncologist can come in, or they can also definitely meet the plastic surgeon that day um, and, um, um, and kind of get their, also their, their view on what's going on. So we definitely talk about them prior, and we come up with a plan. And then on that visit, that initial visit, mm -hmm. um, that's when they meet with the surgeon, but also these other fields when necessary. Sometimes that you don't have to meet with the medical oncologist until later because, um, let's say, if you're going to take the pill, you don't need to talk about that before surgery because mm -hmm. you'll be fine. But um, but if someone has a certain type of cancer where we want to uh, give chemotherapy first, and I didn't talk about this before, sometimes we will okay. to <laughs> more to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we want to give chemotherapy first, especially to the triple negative uh, cancer patients. Okay, and also if you're HER2 positive then they might, will see the medical oncologist uh, with, at that visit also. Okay, is the chemotherapy sort of to, to either stop it or from growing to make mm -hmm. it easier to get to, or I mean, why would you do chemotherapy first? first right, exactly, so a couple reasons. One, to try to treat an area, so either to, if someone has a really big tumor, to make it smaller and easier to do the surgery, we'll get chemo first. Secondly, if the cancer is spread to the lymph nodes, we like to give chemo first to try to treat the lymph nodes. So at, when it comes to the time of the surgery, I don't have to take out all the lymph nodes underneath the underarm. I can okay. only just do a sentinel lymph node biopsy, take out one, two, or three lymph nodes rather than 20 lymph nodes. How many lymph nodes do we have in our underarm? It's about 20, <laughs> 25. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to try to treat the lymph nodes, um, or if someone because the way um, um, drug, drugs have been developed through the FDA, sometimes you, if you get chemo first for a triple negative or HER2 positive breast cancer, if you do chemo first, you can get additional medications later on that you would not see if you, if you started with surgery. So to sort of, okay. so to sort of like improve your outcomes, you, we wanna give you um, chemo first. So it's really important to come to a place like here, mm -hmm. National Cancer Institute designated, right. where people know all the options. Right, exactly. Instead of just right. rushing you off to surgery or, right. or chemo or whatever. Exactly, you want, to, you want your surgeon to know this information because it's very critical. Um, and, and it improves, and it's multiple studies have shown that multidisciplinary care improves people's outcome. Yeah, I mean, I know Clearly, I, I have no problem asking questions, and I would be asking a lot of questions if I were facing that kind of diagnosis right. and whatnot. So I guess it's, it's, it's really good for the patient to be able to get that broad range of, okay, what's your perspective, and what right. would you recommend, and why, and yeah. Exactly. yeah.
very comprehensive care here at yeah. Comprehensive <laughs> Cancer Center. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you had mentioned earlier talking about the reason somebody might choose a mastectomy is because if they couldn't make the trip to get radiation mm -hmm. and so forth. So that, that kind of brings up a lack of access to care, which mm -hmm. is something that unfortunately is very pervasive. Right. Um, not just here, but all over the country. Right. And so we have here a, a breast care center patient support fund. Mm -hmm. Is that yes. correct name? Yes. Okay, yes, good. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and what it does? Right, uh, we've had the fund for um, probably at least 10 or so years. So the fund is, first of all, to provide um, um, free mammograms to women who don't have insurance or can't afford to have a mammogram. Mm -hmm. So um, there's money in the fund for people to, to get um, uh, m uh, free uh, mammographic screening. Also, in the fund, we can provide for people. Let's say, let's say if you if you um, are going to need radiation or something, um, or chemotherapy, mm -hmm. um, some people need help just getting to their appointments. So sometimes we'll 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 give them um, like vouchers for travel and things like that. Okay. Also, like during some of the treatments, it's especially like with with um, radiation treatments. It can uh, cause the skin to peel and flake, and we put uh, the radiation oncologist will recommend special creams and things to put on the on the um, on the breast, mm -hmm. so that fund can help pay for some of the, the those extra supplies and things like that. So um, uh, we definitely have used that to help our patients out through the years. Okay, so so the takeaway here is, do not let a lack of funds stop you. From getting screened, right, or pursuing treatment that you need, right, exactly. And, and a thing that an important thing also that um, North Carolina has is called the BSEP program, the Breast and Cancer Cervical Screening Program. So if you get a mammogram and it's abnormal, um, uh, you really need to call, call. You can call our center here, and we can help get you into the BSEP program. Because if we if if, if we if you are enrolled in BSEP. Uh, and then have a diagnosis of breast cancer, and if you're not insured, the BSEP program will cover the cost of all your treatments. So it's important to get, if you don't have any insurance, still get your screening mam mammogram, it's so important, but we, uh, we'll help you get into the BSEP program and they'll help um, cover the cover cost. The treatment. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So yes, again, as we have said, every single Facebook Live, Early detection, people. Right. Get your screening. <laughs> Get the screenings. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to hear that. And how how can people can they can just anyone donate to this fund or yeah, how, how any, do they? Yeah, anyone can donate to the fund. I think we might have the link coming up, but but um, you can um, donate to the fund. And uh, uh, recently, we had Wake Forest uh, soccer team donate to us, so they made a great donation to us. And uh, uh, and so. Um, we're, we're, we're grateful for them and anyone who donates. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any idea, this is an out of the left field question, sorry about that, any idea how many people you've helped through the fund? I mean, you say it's been here for a long time. Yeah, yeah that, that is a great question. Um, um, usually we, we'll end up helping about, uh, about 200 people per year. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. I'm so yeah. proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of us. Um, well, that is all the actual questions that I have for today, but is there anything that I have not thought to ask or that you want to say to our home viewing audience or? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is the takeaway too. If Number one, everyone get your um, annual screening mammography. I mean, it's very cliche, but mammograms do save lives. If you find something at an early stage, it's easier to treat, less, less, um, um, treatment um, steps um, and uh, people can go on and live and have a great great mm -hmm. uh, wonderful lives and if you have any problem if you feel a mess if you're if you're young if you're less if you're in your 30s in your 20s, 20s, or 20s and feel a mess um, or have a problem get it to, uh, go see a, your doctor to get it evaluated um, one thing is that african-american women tend to have breast cancer at younger age in the 30s and 40s, so even before screening. So if anyone who's African American, they feel a new lump in their breast, I don't care whatever age, um, and wh whatever race, you need to come and get it evaluated. Um, 
Uh, it's very important. Mm -hmm. So yes, always talk to your doctor. If there's anything you have a question about, get your annual screenings. Mm -hmm. Early detection saves lives. Mm -hmm. um, and also, if you want to schedule a mammogram, you can go on the internet to wakehealth.edu slash mammo, M-A-M-M-O. You can go to that URL and, and get in touch to schedule your own mammogram. And if you would like to contribute to our Breast Care Center Patient Support Fund, then you can go to wakehealth.edu slash support mammo, again, M-A-M-M-O. So either one of those, if you need treatment or if you would like to help other people get treatment or get screenings, those are your two URLs. And Dr. Mc Howard McNatt, thank you so much. Oh. This has been awesome. I have really enjoyed it. Oh, thank and you. I, Again, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and talk to us and explain everything. Oh, it's been wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>